Hello everybody, we're going to talk about lipids today. Now what lipids are, are basically oils or fats that come from living things. That's not actually the definition, but that's what they are. As opposed to oils that come out of the ground via an oil rig or something like that. And they're also fixed oils, that as opposed to essential oils, the things that evaporate quickly and that smell nice or horrible as the case may be. Lipids are usually, in living things, triglycerides of fatty acids. Now, a glyceride is something which is based on glycerol. That's glycerol or glycerine. The old bit indicates it's an alcohol. In other words, that it has hydroxyl groups on it. It's nothing to do with ethanol as such, i.e. the stuff that gets you drunk. It just means it's got OH. Another example of that would be phenol. Phenol is an al alcohol, but you wouldn't really want to drink that because it would kill you. So, I mean, obviously the other alcohols kill you as well, but not so quickly. So, you have triglycerides, which means that what happens is the hydrogens come off of there and you get acids slotting in there, by which lose their own hydrogens. And the fatty acids, examples of that are as follows. That's stearic acid, has a whole load of carbons, a whole load of hydrogens and a carboxyl group on the end. The carboxyl group is just there, COOH. Another one, palmitic acid. There, another one, that's uh, found in palm oil, hence the name. Arachidonic acid, right, which as the name suggests is from peanuts. And I've just realised I've missed over the hydrogens off of there, but there are supposed to be hydrogens down there anyway, so I didn't put them. This glycerol, which by the way is also glycerine, loses the hydrogens, and it gets those slotted in, and you end up with a triglyceride. Now here is an example of a triglyceride. Trilorin. I don't know whether that actually exists in nature, but basically you have the three fatty acid molecules slotted into the glycerol at the end, and that's how that works. So, that's what a fat or an oil is. Now, the difference between fats and oils are fats, such as butter, are a melting point above 20 degrees centigrade, whereas oils, such as sunflower oil, have a melting point below 20 degrees centigrade. As far as I know, that's the only difference. Those are fixed oils, by the way. Don't forget, nothing to do with essential oils. Those are the differences. Now, there are also differences between saturated fats and unsaturated fats, or unsaturated oils. Most animal fats are dominantly saturated, so you get single bonds, which is what the saturated means, in the molecules. So if you look, for example, at stearic acid, you notice that it only has single bonds all the way across. And it's more viscous, it's thicker, and it has a higher melting point, so you get that. An example of a polyunsaturated fatty acid would be arachidonic acid, and here's my defective diagram again. Now as you can see, there are several double bonds in there, for example, there. There's another one along here. It's runnier. So peanut oil, which is what that is in, would be runnier and you'd use cooking in an easy way, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get a block of it like that. Vegetable fats are higher in unsaturated fat, and animal fats are higher in saturated fat. There is then a problem if you want to make margarine. Here's some margarine. You have a problem. Imagine, suppose you want to make margarine because you are worried about your butter, because butter is supposed to be bad for your health. So what you do instead is you try to make it out of, for example, Sunflower oil. But the trouble is, sunflower oil is really runny. That's not going to spread on bread very easily. So, as it were, you've got your triglycerides like that, which is straight. So what you do is you hydrogenate them. You add hydrogen to them, which twists these. And the way you do that is you have a load of vegetable oil, you bubble hydrogen through it, and you also add nickel, which is a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is something which speeds up a reaction which wouldn't happen otherwise, it would happen very slowly otherwise, without taking part in the reaction itself. And an example of that is nickel, which is what they use to make margarine. And what that's going to do is it's going to bend all of these. So it's going to be like that, like that, like that, and then carry on like that, because that's what catalysts do, they just carry on and on. And eventually you get a huge tangle of molecules like that, and they stick together, in theory, which that didn't, of course. That is known as the transform, because trans means across, as in Transylvania, for example, across the woods. And the other form is the cease form. The transform is not common in nature. 
There is an example of trans fatty acids in nature, which is in the grease on your skin. And the reason it's there is it kills bacteria. So basically, trans fatty acids are to kill things. What you ha then have to do is make an emulsion. Now, I'm going to try and make an emulsion now. Here is the sunflower oil. Here is some washing up liquid, which is, of course, made from fatty acids. So you put that in there. Like that. Add a bit of water. And it's starting to go cloudy, but as you can see, the oil is floating on top of the water. So you try and mix it together. And it's going to go cloudy, but not margarine. -y. Another example of this is mayonnaise. And the reason mayonnaise works like that is that lecithin is in egg white, and that is an emulsifier in the same way as this is. And what's happening here is you're getting droplets of one in the other. You can have either an oil in water emulsion or a water in oil emulsion. Obviously that's too thin. If you did that very well, and you did it in the right quantities, you end up with that, which is an emulsion of ceased fatty acids, namely sunflower oil and water. You can also use this skin cream. Here's an example of skin cream prepared with this sort of emulsifier. Now, one way of emulsifying it is obviously to use something that used to be alive, such as calendula, which is high in saponines, in other words, soapy stuff, and you will be able to make an entirely biological form of that. So that's how emulsions work. Comes with our mayonnaise, margarine, and skin cream. Uh, the other thing is that the essential fatty acids, such as gamma linoleic acid, is they are actually, in a sense, vitamins. They're, they can't be made by the body itself, and they perform important functions in the body, which are to do, for example, with moderating inflammation and preventing premenstrual syndrome. So they are actually quite important. Uh, and if you miss them out of your diet, you're going to have problems with that. And so that's one of the roles of essential fatty acids. You can't eliminate them from the diet entirely. The other thing about them is that they are actually long chains of something. Now, that might look familiar if you recognise a hydrocarbon. That's another one. Palmitic acid is even closer. And all that is very similar to this, which is octane, which is found in petrol uh, or diesel oil. When you start off with something which has glycerol group on it, there is a process where you make soap, where you remove that using, for example, sodium hydroxide or some other kind of base. So you take off the carboxyl group, and you end up with um, something like that instead, but with a cation on one end, so for example, sodium or potassium, which are the most popular. Now here's some potassium hydroxide, which is a strong base. If you add that to vegetable oil in the right quantities, you have to get the molarity right, otherwise you will die, uh, you will end up with soap. But what you have to do then is you have to take away the glycerol, and you also have to find a way to get rid of the potassium ion that's latched itself onto the end. If you can do that, you can get rid of the potassium ion, replace it with hydrogen, you will have basically diesel. And that is what biodiesel is. Now there is a political issue with biodiesel. Because biodiesel is used and is quite profitable, it means that it makes food crops that could be used for oil more expensive. So there is a bit of an ethical issue there in making biodiesel. And also it would mean that farms will find it more profitable to grow oil crops that can be used to make biodiesel. There is a lot more I can say about this because I'm a herbalist and I know loads and loads of stuff about lipids, but that isn't what is covered in the GCSE syllabus, so that's what I'm going to leave it, but apparently all of this is. So, if you like this video, please rate, comment and subscribe. And if you dislike this video, tell me why you dislike it, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.